I'm Steve Raymond from UCLA, and I will be discussing image-guided minimally invasive whole gland treatment for the next few minutes. Are no relevant disclosures. So that brings us to MR-guided prostate cancer treatment. Before we did anything, we, we wanted to estimate how MR predicted size. And on the basis of these bold studies, we showed that for local treatment, we needed an MR yield, which was approximately one to 1.5 centimeters larger than the original MR lesion. And so this is how we came up with multiple axes showing that we needed about eight to seven to 10 millimeters of margin beyond the MR targeted lesion. As you know, focal therapy has emerged as an alternative treatment with the goal of reducing side effects and maintaining cancer control by targeting areas of known cancer within the prostate gland. This device, a transrectal device, as you can see here, with a transducer in the rectum with a cooling balloon surrounding it, targeting prostate cancer in the posterior half of the prostate gland with focused ultrasound to that area. As you can see here, the prostate is outlined, the target is outlined with a large margin around the target as we had done in the laser trials, followed by a treatment plan with multiple sonications. And at the end of the treatment, we see an area covered parallels that treatment plan. The nice thing about this is we can see the entire prostate during the scan. We can use thermometry to understand where the heat's being delivered and avoid areas like the neurovascular bundle or the urethra to minimize heating there. There's also a cooling catheter in the urethra here. 2018, the FDA proposed guidelines to develop new focal therapy devices with an emphasis on trial designs and potential alternative endpoints. So this is released in group two or three prostate cancer with the novel endpoint of delay in radiation or surgery associated with disease progression on active surveillance. So the next study was MR-guided transurethral ultrasound treatment, or Tulsa Pro. This is transurethral ablation in a, with a different device, it's a transurethral direction ultrasound, which also uses MR guidance, but now can either do whole gland or partial gland treatment, as you can see here in the video on the right. It uses real-time MR thermometry with an ultrasound beam, which sweeps out from the urethra out uh, in a radial fashion around the prostate, as you can see here. So we can cover the entire prostate gland with the 10 elements from the apex to the base, or we can, cut, we can turn any of those elements off and cover part of the prostate, as we see here. It's a customized and predictable treatment, and the MR dosimetry enables a closed feedback loop for millimeter precision. It's designed for safety. So this device has been studied quite well with preclinical trials, a clinical feasibility trial in, in 2010, treatment resect trials in 2012-13, phase one trials in 2013-14, followed by the TAC trial 2016 through 18, which customized ablation as is going on now. So this TAC trial involved 115 patients in 13 institutions across in Europe, United States, and Canada. And the idea was to have a hypothesis which involved improved efficacy outcomes in a more clinically significant population while maintaining a similar favorable outcome profile with doubling NBV treatment heating. So the TAC trial was 115 men in 13 institutions with whole gland ablation sparing the urethra and sphincter. The endpoints, primary endpoints of 12 months were safety, including the frequency and adversity of severity of adverse events and efficacy with a PSA reduction of greater than 75% and 50% of patients. Secondary endpoints were 12 month volume reduction and 12 month MP MRI results as read by Central Radiology Lab with quality of life, including EPIC, IIEF, and IPSS scores. Baseline histology were clinically significant Gleason grade group two in over 80% of patients, high volume Gleason grade one, or low volume Gleason grade one in less than 15% of patients. Baseline Pyrads V2 scores included Pyrads four or greater in the majority of patients, and Pyrads three in a small minority of patients, and Pyrads less than two in less than 15% of patients. The system is compatible with different. Vendors, Philips and Siemens, consists of a robotic arm with computer hardware and energy device system, surgical console in the control room, and disposable applicators, erectile cooling, and the transurethral device itself. So 
It involves MR-guided device positioning, precise treatment planning, and an automated robotically driven adaptive delivery system with confirmation of ablation margin with MRI. So we place a superfluid catheter, and this is my colleague, Dr. Alan Pantuck, inserting the device over a guide wire into the urethra and positioning it in, in the prostatic urethra. Basically, once that's done, we then image the uh, prostate with the device in position. Here is the device coronally and sagittally and coronally. We outline the entire prostate. And then here are the 10 elements here at different, we outline the entire prostate from apex to base, make sure that we know exactly where the neurovascular bundle is, where the ure urethra, sphincter, bladder, neck, and other critical structures are to avoid injury to these areas. So this is a cartoon of, of that schematic. The device is shaped like a coup d'etat tip and is inserted into the bladder with these elements which cover the entire prostate gland in this radial eating pattern from the urethra outwards. So here again is the device in action with the 10 elements from apex to base with different elements firing at different times and covering the entire prostate gland. And setup again looks like this. This is a sagittal image showing the device into the bladder. There's the prostate with the elements covering the entire prostate gland and directal cooling device. And here it is an axial so with the same monitoring. Here is more of the same device with, in a sped up video showing the entire gland being treated. And at the end of it, you can see no enhancement in the gland showing, indicating very good temperature, very good thermal ablation. And you can see the thermometry is keyed into what the actual temperature here is so that we can ensure that we have greater than 60 degrees in the critical areas where we need. In terms of efficacy, the PSA met its 75% reduction within one month and uh, stayed that way for 12 months. At 12 months, the majority of patients had no histologic evidence of disease or insignificant disease. About 21% of patients had clinically significant disease. By two years, 7% had post-Tulsa salvage for radiation and four with radical prostatectomy. In terms of safety, there are no interoperative complications, no rectal injury or fistula. There were 12 grade three adverse events in nine men. It was resolved by one year, including five infections, two retentions, one stenosis, one bladder pain, one calculus, one urinoma. Grade two adverse events included UTI retention and stenosis. In terms of urinary and bowel symptoms, there were no severe urinary incontinence, 2.6% of moderate urinary incontinence. There's no change in IPSS at one and two years, no change in epic bowel function or bother at one and two years. Erectile function uh, recovered to eight, in 83% of men with the IIEF scores returning to baseline. Here is a complete ablation in a man with PSA at baseline of 5.5 and 58 cc prostate. At the end of ablation, PSA was 6.0 on the day of, and then decreased significantly to 0.3, less than 0.1, and less than 0.1 12 months thereafter. And you can see the prostate volume had a dramatic decrease in size, 91% decrease in size. Here's a, a case of follow-up recurrence, and in that recurrence, there's in, incomplete ablation here, as shown on the diffusion-weighted images. And you can see that thermometry, for whatever reason, suboptimal in that area. So we can also see areas of incomplete treatment and predict that quite rapidly on the baseline image of the baseline scores. We also developed a, a post ablation PIRAD score and basically showed that the specificity was high for different PIRADs grades with increasing sensitivity for a Gleason group two and increasing sensitivity for Gleason group greater than two. So in context, we had 115 patients with 79% with efficacy, 21% had clinically significant disease at 12 months, 14% had insignificant disease. And that compares to prostatectomy, radiation, and HIFU, which, has, which have much higher rates of clinically significant disease, much higher rates of erectile dysfunction, urinary incontinence, urethral stricture rates, and GI toxicity. And safety profile here, as expected, was much better than any of the other competitive modalities. 
This can also be done in a, in a focal fashion and as well as whole gland fashion. So in conclusion, I think MR is the basis for prostate cancer staging, diagnosis, and follow-up, and now MR-guided treatment. And these two trials in 2019-20 show high oncologic efficacy and control with favorable outcomes in terms of the side effect profile for erectile function, bladder function, and GI toxicity. And MR thermometry, I think, is a real advance in terms of understanding how to treat the prostate and also predicting failure early based on suboptimal thermometry as was shown. So based on this, the Tulsa Pro device received US 510K clearance for prostate tissue ablation in August 2019. And we expect that the Exablate device will also receive 510K clearance, hopefully in the next 12 months. And then we can think about partial gland, whole gland salvage, and other treatment for BPH and other things with these devices. So thank you.